What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here in this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, another week, another town hall in the books. This is for November 20th, 2023. It is Thanksgiving week, so happy Turkey Day to everybody celebrating. And uh, this is, you know, we, we had some major rebellion alpha dropped. Now, uh, I don't want to keep flipping back and forth, and so I therefore I did a separate video kind of covering covering all of the new cards that were uh, were kind of like teased out, the stats, abilities, all that stuff. So check that video out if you want me to do, uh, or if you're looking for a deeper dive into those. What I was just focused on really was what the team was saying, not what the team was showing, but what the team was saying for this five biggest takeaways. So let's go ahead and jump right in. You know, my, my only caveat is the, the usual disclaimer that this is not a full summary. There is a written summary officially from the team, as well as many other content creators that put together, uh, you know, solid video summaries. So make sure to check them out, show them some support. Uh, this is just the five things that stuck out to me and I wanted to share them with you. So number one, and this is probably the most important as of now, right? Land 1.5 and rebellion are still on track for delivery. Now, when it comes to land, you know, that kind of means nothing. Sorry, just got to say it right. But as it stands right now, there hasn't been, you know, with all the different bugs and stuff like that, there has not been any talk of delaying it any further than November 28th, which is what we're still kind of like, uh, you know, hoping for at this point. And then, of course, Rebellion is now set to come literally a week later than that on December 5th. So those dates have not shifted. I personally hope that they do not shift at this point. Um, and, you know, here we are. So Land Rebellion still on track. We'll see how things go. But uh, as of now, that is very good news. And until we hear otherwise, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll with it. That's what we got. Okay, number two, they teased this new ability that I have just been so excited about. If you've jumped on the live streams or seen in other videos, I've talked about the fact that um, you know my experience having played some of the the, the play testing tournaments so far, the ambush ability. It is, it is awesome. Essentially what it does is it creates a round zero for the game in which any units that have the ambush ability are able to carry out their normal things, right? Obviously attack, but if there's any other things that they need to do uh, that are part of their normal, you know, turn cycle, they will take, you know, they will take care of that in that first round zero. So to me, you know, I, I thought it was going to be OP at first. I, I definitely have been abusing it in the play test things because it's just, it's just so fun. And, uh, you know, obviously there's, you know, they show, they showed one unit today, the one that, uh, Bulldog had teased on his stream uh, a little while ago. They sh they showed that unit in kind of like all its glory. So now you know, understand what it looks like. Uh, but there's one thing that I just want to highlight here. And I, I, I'm not going to say anything further than this. I'm just going to point to what was kind of said in the town hall uh, from Call Me Tim. So shout out to Call Me Tim, who's been uh, designing Rebellion, in which he said the team is exploring ways in which, you know, this ability can be given to anyone. Um, and so I, I'm paraphrasing there, but I just, I want to point that out because, uh, I don't want it to just get lost in the shuffle. I think it's going to make things really interesting, uh, if they can figure that out and, um, <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that there. That's all it is. I'm really excited for this ability because, you know, back in January of this year, when Matt was talking about rebellion coming in and bringing in just a new type of game mechanic, that's exactly what I was looking for. So now we got the summoner tactics. Now we got the ambush ability, which is, you know, essentially this, this round zero where you can kind of go in and and uh and, and make use of of uh you know monsters or make use of monsters and abilities what was interesting is that call me tim said the main meta within splinter lens right now really is speed so being able to kind of circumvent that without changing anything within the speed um or cha changing cards essentially is this is a really creative way in my opinion to go and try and do it now maybe maybe I, it's overblown maybe i'm hyping it up too much like i said it's been one of the most exciting things for me to try to pair up to see what synergies work well um, simply because it's, well, maybe it's new and shiny, but I will say that I think once everybody has the ability to give it a shot, you're going to get addicted just like me. So ambush ability, I'm glad that they finally announced it. I hope that you are as excited about it as I am. Uh, but yes, I it's, it's, it's going to be sweet. Okay, number three, they've talked about this in the past. And while it may not really impact rebellion as a whole, uh, one thing that I think is important to call out and just kind of like at the long, uh, lo looking at this from a, a much longer perspective, is that they do want to get to a place where the game has a, a little bit more um, freshness to it or la lack of staleness. I, I know those those seem like opposites, but it's just like 
the the two things that were mentioned, right? Abilities. They want to be able to cycle abilities in and out. So, uh, for example, there might be some abilities in Rebellion that you do, that uh, you just don't see, right? You're used to seeing them in other in other uh, cards or in other sets, right? Maybe they were prevalent in Chaos Agent, and maybe you think that like, oh, because they were an Untamed, somebody has to like repeat it and bring it in for a Rebellion. But you know, um, at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is just keep the game fresh by not just throwing everything out there into the mix. So it sounds like that they are planning, again, maybe starting with the Rebellion, but definitely further out, to cycle abilities in and out just so that, you know, the meta doesn't get too crazy. I mean, if you want to go play in wild and you want to have access to everything, then awesome, right? That's that's exactly where you want to be. But uh, for, for the modern meta, I think what's going to be really interesting is to see how they go about doing this to keep things very interesting. The other part of this was element specialties, right? So your water, fire, death, uh, life and earth right now, you know, everybody's got kind of a mix of everything. Um, and so what, what my guess is that as they move forward, different elements are going to start to specialize in certain areas. I don't know if that's in certain attack types. I don't know if that it, that's in certain abilities or certain, you know, uh, monster types or unit types, but overall, you know, it's kind of cool to see, or at least hear them talk about the fact that this is a long-term plan. They really want to start separating out the different elements so that you can not necessarily go only with with one element, right? Uh, obviously, if you if you can't, you know, the biggest the collection, the biggest the bigger your collection, the better your chances of winning. But as we go forward, you know, maybe just from a gameplay meta perspective, I think it's going to be fun to be like, oh, here's the rule set. Like I'm immediately going to go towards this uh, this element just because I know it specializes in X Y Z, right? Whereas now you kind of like go all across the board. So again, maybe maybe it'll be too restrictive. Maybe it won't be restrictive enough. Either way, it's just cool to see hear them talk about the fact that they're thinking through this on a multi-set basis over the next, you know, several years. Uh, okay, number four, there are going to be some changes to weapons training. Now, it has not been finalized. All this is subject to change, but I think what's going to be really important here is the fact that it's going to buff up a lot of the non-attack monsters because the main change in which they are testing right now is to let weapons training essentially be there even if the weapons trainer ends up dying in battle. So what does that mean, right? Like, let's say you got Kulu Mastermind and he's giving it to Bakjira, right? Given, uh, if, if something happens to Kulu Mastermind, Bakjira will still keep the attack until the end of the fight. Now, I believe Oppress and I believe Dispel will still uh, impact the non-attack monster, right? Because they're just trained that way. But in a sense, what it's going to be able to do is you put it in once, and all of a sudden, you know, it's it's there for the entire game, right? You, you, all, all you have to do is just have it there, and then you don't need to worry about the, the monsters uh, or the, the units being there for the entire game. Now, I, I immediately off the bat, I'm just like, oh, are there any like weapons trainer like martyrs? That would be kind of that would be kind of a cool little interesting combo that you could do. But I don't I don't think that's the case. And I have no idea, you know, in terms of like what's going on with Rebellion. I highly doubt that we're gonna see that kind of thing. But my mind just kind of went there. Uh, but overall, I think that this is gonna be a great change to weapons training because now you can really plan for the long term. And with all of the cool different non-attack units that they have coming in Rebellion that mainly act as support. I mean, the synergies are just going to be delicious between all of them, right? You'll be able to do so much uh, with the combination of those cards as well as the ones in Rebellion. Again, I'm speaking about non-attack. And of course, if there's a, if there's more weapons trainers available as well, uh, and I believe that there are going to be in, in Rebellion, I mean, that's just going to make things even crazier and more fun. Um, okay, so that is weapons training. The last one here, and we'll try to close out uh, in a relatively relatively fast five biggest takeaways these last couple of weeks haven't been too crazy uh the soulbound unlock plans will come out after sorry soulbound soulbound unlock is going to be planned out after the land 2.0 white paper is out so matt was kind of very candid on his you know uh schedule and where things are at right now the main focus has been on on uh, land 1.5 and Rebellion, and also he's trying to finish up the first draft, and yes, it is a draft of the Land 2.0 white paper. So what he was saying today is that, you know, a lot of people have been asking, what are we doing with Soulbound cards? Can we unlock them? When can we unlock them? What What's the cost going to be? How, how are we going to handle this, right? Matt, uh, maybe a month or two ago, whenever he first took over, kind of punted this and said, like, look, it's, it, we're, it's not going to happen until next year, right? Well, so now we're coming up to the end of November. Land is imminent. Rebellion is imminent. 
the Land 2.0 white paper, Matt said, is still on track to come out by the end of the month. So if we're going to get Land 1.5 on November 28th, I mean, hopefully we get the white paper within a couple of days of that, right? Uh, November only goes until the 30th. So once that is done, my hope is that, you know, Matt will be able to shift some of his focus uh, from a game design perspective away from the, you know, away from all the stuff since it'll be out already and focus heavily on what we're going to do with these soulbound cards. Uh, because, you know, people have a ton of them and uh, there's just, uh, I, I, it does not seem as though we are going to get a rotation anytime soon. So being able to unlock them or do something with them, I think is at least going to be a nice stopgap solution until we get the next set of soulbound reward cards for Rebellion, which my guess would be sometime, hopefully by the end of Q1, but you know, who, who knows how long it's going to take for the team to really design out and, and, you know, make artwork and all that stuff for these new cards. Uh, plus the, the, you know, rebellion core set is going to shake up the meta so much that in a way you don't want there to be too much, right? Let's keep it fresh. So we kind of want to be able to push that out while also making it so that everybody who wants to have a card that they can now can go and get one. And anybody who keeps continuing to receive these cards or at right, these soulbound reward cards, if there's a market for it and people want to buy them, well, then they can unlock them and get some kind of uh, reward from that. Because right now, what sucks, is I don't even want to say like financial reward. It's just, if you get a chest that, that gives you a card that you already have maxed out, it's like, well, what are you going to do with that? There's nothing that you can do at the current moment. You can't go trade it for something else. You can't burn it for DEC. You can't do anything, right? And I'm not saying that they should be burnable for DEC, but at least once the market is opened, I think that's going to be a major thing. Uh, or so they're unlockable, and then there's a market open for it. If you want to go and dump it on the market for a penny or, or a penny above whatever the the unlock cost is, you can, right? And then you can take that penny and go grab a bunch of pennies and, and and maybe start buying more rebellion packs. I don't know how that's going to work, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so that's that's kind of where the plans are for Soulbound. There's obviously a lot of conversation about that right now, but hopefully we will get um, some kind of if not clarity, at least direction on that soon of where Matt's head is at, because it doesn't seem like he's been focused on it at all, as he has been very focused on getting all these things out. But in the next two weeks, two and a half weeks, I mean, everything that they've been working towards, minus Soul Keep, of course, everything that they've been working towards will hopefully be out. And, um, you know, and he did mention uh, just, I guess, a quick soul keep thing. He did mention that they're, they're still trying to work on that. So there's no, there's no plan in place. They're trying to get a plan, but there's nothing that they, they have for, for soul keep. So for everybody salty about soul keep, keep being salty. There's, <laughs> there's no, there's no change yet. So we'll, we'll see what ends up happening with that. Um, but otherwise a, a pretty solid town hall, you know, the, a majority of the time was spent with Nate and call me Tim going into a lot of the abilities and, uh, the new cards as stats that were released. So once again, just a reminder, you know, I did a completely separate video on those. If you want to go check those out. Um, and obviously when the new cards are actually revealed and we're able to play them on the test server. Oh, speaking of which that the, the time frame for those being on the test server sometime next week, right? A week before rebellion seems to still be on track as well. So when those do come out, we will be doing deep dives here into all of the cards. But that is all I have for you guys in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next video and see you around the game. Take care.